Hey, Seraph here, and we are back for more chemistry explanation made easy. We have a subreddit. You can post your chemistry questions and we will provide you with the explanations and solutions. You can find the link in the description below. This is the third video of a four-part series on qualitative analysis. If you have not watched the intro, you can find the link below the like button. Alright, let's jump into the video. From our last video, you have been tasked to determine the identity of an unknown substance. This video will explore the different kinds of tests used to identify the anions in the substance. To test for anions, we will be adding testing chemicals and record the observations. There are three main types of observations we need to take note of for this test, which are forming of precipitates, bubbles of gas, also known as effervescence, changes of color, for example, litmus papers test. Depending on the observations we make, we will be able to identify the anion component of the sample. There are a total of five anions in the IGCSE O-Level syllabus that students need to remember, and they are nitrates, carbonates, chlorides, sulfates, iodides. Each anion has different observations, as follows. Nitrates are related to ammonia gas. Carbonates are related to carbon dioxide gas. Chlorides and sulfates are related to white precipitates. Iodides are related to yellow precipitates. Let's go into detail for each of the different anions. When testing for nitrates, we are looking for gas formations. To do that, we add sodium hydroxide and aluminium powder to the test compound or solution. When these chemicals are added, we observe bubble formations also known as effervescence. The gas formations are tested with red limus paper, which turns blue, proving or indicating to us that it is the alkaline ammonia gas. A quick side note, in examinations, students often get mixed up whether this test is meant for nitrate ions or ammonium ions. The key here depends on whether aluminium powder is added. When testing for both ammonium and nitrate ions, sodium hydroxide is added. When testing for ammonium ions, the test is conducted without aluminium powder after sodium hydroxide is added. When testing for nitrate ions, the test is conducted with aluminium powder after sodium hydroxide is added. To test for carbonates, we add hydrochloric acid. When the hydrochloric acid are added, there will be effervescence observed. The gas formed here are tested with lime water, which forms white precipitates, which proves or indicates to us that it is carbon dioxide. To test for chlorides, add nitric acid and lead to nitrate or silver nitrate. Either will produce white precipitates, proving that chloride ions exist in the tested chemicals. To test for sulfates, we add nitric acid and barium nitrate. When the testing chemicals are added, white precipitate will be observed, proving that sulfate is present. Do note that in exams, the keyword barium usually hints at the involvement of sulfate ions. To test for iodides, add nitric acid and lead to nitrate or silver nitrate. Either will produce yellow precipitates, proving that iodide ions exist in the tested chemicals. Do note that in exams, yellow precipitate usually hints at the involvement of iodide ions. In summary, for nitrate ion tests, sodium hydroxide and aluminium powder is added to produce ammonia gas. For carbonate ion tests, hydrochloric acid is added to produce carbon dioxide gas. For chloride ion tests, nitric acid and lead to nitrate or silver nitrate is added to produce white precipitate. For sulfate ion tests, 
nitric acid, and barium nitrate is added to produce white precipitate. For iodide ion tests, nitric acid and lead 2 nitrate or silver nitrate is added to produce yellow precipitate. And that about covers the anion test. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I'm Saraf. Thanks for watching. See you next time.